Green Man is a leading festival with a long-term commitment to environmental sustainability and reducing its carbon footprint. We looked at the green initiatives and climate action that has taken place throughout the festival to show you how green Green Man really is. So my name's Connor, I'm the tour leader for Red Fox Cycling. There's 27 riders cycling from Bristol and from Cardiff today. The bread and butter and you know the kind of start of Red Fox is always going to be these festival rides because that's how the company started. But we'll always do these festivals um, just because you know it's the funnest way to do our Red Fox cycling. I'm Anna. Hi, I'm Rob. So we cycled to Paddington, got the train to Cardiff. We were up at five o'clock this morning. And then we cycled from Cardiff to here. A full day, full day. I did it last year and it's just very good fun to make friends with people we cycled with. I saw it as an option on the website. I was like, yeah, why would we not do that? That sounds great. Let's give it a go. We really want people to cycle and appreciate nature and also get to the festival way less stressed and better for the planet. And, you know, it's better for you on the way to the festival. You get to know people that are doing something similar and you might bump into them and have a beer whilst you're having a dance on the dance floor. It's such a good way to get to the festival. In fact, they're all having a beer now, so they'll come down here really happy and really excited to be, to be starting. So, here we are, talking to some of the festival vendors about how they have also contributed to being more sustainable at Green Man. We make uh, raincoats and accessories from leftover camping equipment that gets left at music festivals. So we make raincoats, uh, laptop cases, tote bags, accessories, dog coats, kids coats, adult coats. And then the workshop that I'm running here today utilises the offcuts from the fabric from the workshop. So you get to come over and make a collage, um, design your own tote bag and then I sew it all together here and you come back for it a few hours later. So it's a really nice way of using every, every bit of the tent. So we're a zero waste brand, all even the tiny little bits get used, it's like stuffing and stuffing, camping pillows. And then collection at Green Man, so going, to, going and doing the collection on the Monday, picking up the tents is like a really lush experience compared to doing some of the festivals. They kind of like absolute carnage afterwards, whereas Green Man is very green. <laughs> yeah, they, they love the idea and I think it's, it's such a nice place for people to see the brand or learn about the brand because it's like it's come full circle. Like this is this is exactly where, where it started in festival fields and it's where it's come to life. So it's a perfect place to sell and tell people about it. We've never used plastic straws at our bars. That's over 500,000 straws saved since 2007. I'm Buster Grant. I'm the head brewer of Brecon Brewing, which is part of a small group of companies that involves Coal Black Label and Lithic Brewing. Our business ideologies, wow, that's a good one. Uh, brew great beer, simple one. <laughs> I've been brewing in, in Brecon now for the best part of 20 years. Yeah, it's, it's always it's trying, to, trying to keep up with what's going on, trying to be ahead of the curve occasionally. And it's been a real pleasure working with, with the whole team at Green Man to get the beers and, and expand from the original growler. We now have uh, the, the IPA, also uh, the last mango in Powys. We still maintain our slot at the courtyard, which is, which is great. If you're dealing with local breweries, obviously your transport mileage is significantly reduced. Um, yeah, there, there's sound economic reasons for it and, and there's sound environmental reasons for, for doing less transport. Um, beer at the end of the day is, is predominantly water. So you're transporting something around that's very heavy. So the less mileage you do with that, the better it is for the environment. My name's Mark Bennett. I own Bennett's Fish and Chips. And we've got a second sister company called Seaside Fish and Chips, which we're using at Green Man this weekend. And we've decided to use fully sustainable MSC fish, RSPO, fully sustainable oil, which means they're, they're replanting trees as, quick, as much as they're taken away. So um, our ethos is to keep the sustainability going. All of our fish comes from the Icelandic and Norwegian waters, which is the best sustainable way to fish in the ocean, basically. And all our packaging is recyclable, um, all the water and everything else is all canned or there's no plastics, um, all our cutlery is wooden. So as a business moving forward, we're trying to keep in line with sustainability policies as yeah. soon as possible. We don't allow any single-use serving wear on site. 
We spoke to some of you to see how your small changes helped to make a massive difference and prove that we can still enjoy festivals without harming our planet. My stare just went right to me. I'm going to look at you rather because I feel like you meant I think it's a good idea. It's a lot better than the Porsche Luz because I remember in the past, like, I, people would go in, close the door behind them, and people wouldn't realize they were empty. So everyone would just be queuing for just one when there'd be like 10, 15 empty ones. But these ones are a bit better. Uh, they're interesting. I mean, it's, it's a good concept of the, uh, the whole sustainable thing. I mean, I guess the first couple of days are kind of fine. Towards the end, it does get a bit. A bit smelly, but I mean, I think I think that's the same with any kind of festival toilet, to be honest. So it's, it's good that they're not using any like gross chemical types of shit like in there. Every year, I like, just go around and collect about 20, 30 left on the ground, take them home, clean them up, and then every time we have a house party, we just like pull out 30 odd cups of just green band stuff and use them. It's pretty. The cups. Yeah. Pretty fun. I mean, yeah, it's good that they're not doing like those. Um, what do you call it, those like non-recyclable plastic stuff because they just break so easily as well. I guess also because they've got like the different designs and stuff, it's more of an incentive for people to keep them after as well and keep using them so they're not just going to waste at the end, which is quite nice. So I, I saw this one guy, he said he'd had one since like 2010. <laughs> I was like, no, okay, fair. It's probably, as, it's probably as green as like a festival can be. Like you're obviously putting loads of like carbon in the air by driving massive trucks to the site and stuff. You know, I think they do a pretty good job here of keeping it fairly clean and tidy and not making like wrecking all this lovely countryside that we've got here. So. Although they're making the effort to be a more sustainable festival compared to others, which again with like the toilets and the cups and everything and yeah, the solar stage we've got and they, yeah, they do the shuttle buses and yeah, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot going on I think. Well, there you have it. Thanks to your cooperation, Green Man is able to stay green and show everyone else how it's done. So keep your cups, buy from local businesses, avoid cars where you can and encourage others to do the same. In short, stay green. <laughs>